Well, uh, breaking news at this time on Friday, we were witnessing a horrific situation unfold at Fort Lauderdale Airport. Esteban Santiago Ruiz opened fire in a baggage claim, killing five from his from a gun he had put in his checked luggage and then retrieved at baggage claim. Today, he's arriving for his first court appearance. Two of the three charges against him carry the possibility of the death penalty. He said he understood his rights before explaining he was not employed and had served in the Army for about 10 years. Next court date is the 17th. But prior to the events in Fort Lauderdale, Santiago was living and working in Alaska as a security guard after a 10-month tour of Iraq in 2010. It's after that tour, when he came home, that his aunt and brother say he was changed, recalling that he said he heard voices and had visions all the time. How do we prevent another Fort Lauderdale? Fox News strategic analyst Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, and, and how do we? Uh, a, if we believe that he was a changed man and was hearing voices, and that a year ago he walked into a field office of the FBI in Alaska and had a gun in his car, and he still had a gun last Friday, and pulled off this nefarious, horrific act, what do we do, Colonel Peters? Well, in the long run, we have to accept the fact you cannot. You cannot stop every lone gunman, every terrorist, every renegade truck driver. And there are two dangers. One is overreacting. You don't want to lock down the baggage claim area. Air travel is tough enough. You lock down baggage claim, they just shoot outside the, the, the terminal doors. Uh, so we don't want to turn our society into a mega police state. But the other thing I think is that uh, we are in real danger because of copycat effects. Uh, not, and not just among Islamist terrorists, but among people like disturbed young men or men like this, you're in the danger of terror, acts of terror, becoming the default position uh, for misfits. Right, right. And that is really scary. It is. And, and we'll wait to hear what happens uh, further with this awful, awful case. But uh, this country is dealing with enough drama, Colonel Peters, uh, specifically now with the Russian situation, where it appears that Vladimir Putin, at least to some people, is able in a way to launch a new frontier, mm -hmm. has managed to weaken the United States by dividing us. You have the president-elect uh, fighting with Democrats uh, because I think Donald Trump maybe perceives that accepting the fact that Russia may have hacked into our election somehow delegitimizes him as, as the president. I, I don't see that at all. I, he won it. Clearly yes. America wanted a change. Ex-Russia and any involvement, anybody who thinks that, that he didn't win it fairly is, is really wrong here. However, is Vladimir Putin playing Donald Trump? Well, Donald, he has already humiliated and played two American presidents. He'd be glad to play a, play a third. I'm extremely worried that Donald Trump will never criticize Putin for anything ever. And there's probably a backstory there. But Liz, you whoa, whoa, used whoa, whoa, whoa. very... What backstory? Does, does Putin know something? Well, what we don't know. Backstory? Look, we don't know. I mean, how do we explain the fact that Donald Trump will never say anything negative about Putin. Uh, more will, I'm sure, emerge in the coming months. But let's concentrate on what we do know. You made a very important point about dividing us. Putin is brilliant. He is a, a genius of manipulating people, manipulating information, societies, and he hates us. He is, has a visceral hatred of the United States of America. He is not and will never be our friend. So if we are to deal with him, if the president-elect wants to deal with, with Putin, one, you've got to be extremely wary. Do not be overconfident, because Putin's mm -hmm. master of judo, quite literally. And three, deal from a position of strength. We, we the United States of America, we hold uh, the, the royal flush. Putin has been playing brilliantly with a pair of sevens and bluffing everybody. And, and the but, economy, with an economy the size of Italy, he is yeah. able to conduct shadow wars and do all kinds of issues, it, it pull them off, and he's effectively gotten the president elect to defend him, the leader of a country that doesn't ascribe to many of our values like privacy and freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. But look, uh, neither Russia nor the United States wants to deploy human 
cost out in, in wars that are outside our borders. However, right now, Donald Trump, and, and a lot of people like this, he talks extremely tough. Strait of Hormuz, yesterday, Iranian fast boats uh, zoomed by our Navy ships once again. Donald Trump has said that when he's president, he'll shoot those boats right out of the water. Um, look, we're a business network. We look at that. We look at how those headlines affect people's money. We've got to do the right thing. But that's a choke point of, of major oil trafficking and moving in and out when you talk about oil inventory. Uh, does Donald Trump uh, and his moves have the potential to markedly affect any market that's out there and, and our investor viewers? Any president of the United States has the possibility of affecting markets worldwide. Um, there's no blanket answer. Uh, now, in the Strait of Hormuz incident, if things get too dangerous, the naval commanders on the ground do have to have complete liberty to defend themselves and their ships and, and know the president will support well, them. Well, they came within 900 meters. Is yeah, 900 close meters, enough? it's close enough to fire warning shots. You get much closer. And the Iranians have been encouraged by President Obama's weakness, by his endless vacillation and procrastination. Mm -hmm. And so the next president, is President Trump, is gonna, he's going to have to be tough, but wisely tough. And for instance, to go back briefly to Russia, if he, wanted, he wants to make a deal with Russia, he needs to decide up front exactly what he wants from that deal. What do we ask? What do we demand? And he also needs to know what Putin wants, and that's transparent. First of all, Putin wants everything, yeah. but immediately he needs sanctions relief. Okay. Economy one tenth the size of ours. Uh, you know, rubles uh, has dropped severely. Poverty rates doubled in two years. Two years of decline in GDP. He can't afford the ambitious military program he wants. And Liz, we need to make sure we don't write him a check to renew his military program Amen. and go wild again. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. <laughs> they, they don't bargain, ascribe to the bargain. same values America does. That is definitely true yeah. about Russia. Uh, Lieutenant, great to see you. Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Thank you, Liz. Anytime. Thank you.